So let's 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 try this. The people who supported Donald Trump enough to go and storm into the Capitol, right? Yes. Uh, Trump got 74 million votes. Not every single person would agree with that, but 250,000 people were in D.C. that day to support Donald Trump. People holding that sentiment, do you think they would fairly assess a criminal trial against, say, Hunter Biden? Listen, I, I have two very close friends who are Trump supporters, but I think that they would wish to give someone a fair trial, no matter who they were. I so, don't think that wh who, who you support politically, I like to think that there is a center of conscience in this country. The fact that I support someone politically doesn't mean I'm going to sacrifice my integrity or my adherence to the law. So where are the criminal prosecutions for the rioters in, tw uh, in 2017, in, on January 20th? Does it set fire to vehicles, torched things in the streets, smashed windows, uh, beat police? Anytime, anytime there is anyone who acts outside the law, there is a reason for them to be held accountable. So my Th question that's is, why, that's why lady, you know, lady if, if justice is, if, has a blindfold. If on. it is fair, then no. why is it that the far left extremists who uh, set fires and vandalized and destroyed things in D.C., not only were they acquitted, uh, or I should say not even acquitted, the charges were dropped, but they were paid out a, a million dollar settlement. Why is it that in, in Washington, D.C., when the far left destroys, burns, and, and vandalizes, and bangs on the doors, and smashes their way into these buildings, nothing. Well, first, first, first of all, rioting in the street is different than... Oh, that was different. No, but I mean like when the they capital, like... The United States. I mean and, like when they go in... For the death of the vice president with the guillotine. Sure, but... I will go and take Trump out tonight. Take him out now. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still gonna have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Oh, this is just a warning to you Trumpers. We ain't playing with you. For those of you who are soldiers, you know how to do it. Make them pay. Uh, and he has to be, uh, he has to be eliminated. Oh, that was different. Of course, of course, it's different when they do it. Okay, first of all, let's get a few things straight. It is actually free speech to say, hang my pent. And if it wasn't, then a lot of Democrats should be in prison after the Bush years. Because they did and said a lot worse about George W. Bush. Second, there was no guillotine. It was a miniature gallows. And as I pointed out many times, this again was also standard fare during both the Bush years and the Trump years. Which is exactly what we're talking about here. A two-tiered partisan justice system that let Let's Democrats basically do whatever they want and the media will dutifully call it a protest and all charges will be dropped while their political opponents are demonized by that same media to the point where anytime they protest it's treated as some sort of terrorist action and you don't have to have much of an imagination to see where that leads let's 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 compare say like uh a guy who, uh, the, the Q shaman, for instance, right? You're familiar with the Q shaman? He was escorted into the building by police. They walk him around on video, trying to open doors for him and lead him to the Senate chamber. Why did that guy go to prison? But the people who occupied and disrupted Congress for, say, abortion rights or for the, for the Dakota Access Pipeline, when, they do, when, the, when the left goes and occupies congressional buildings, by force. Wait There's a minute. No Wait a minute. Oh, that was different. And it wasn't just those. And more recently, they did it with Kavanaugh. They've done it with the abortion stuff. And they've done it at many state houses. The pro-Hamas people just did it recently. But nobody's ever charged in these things. And they never called it an insurrection. And there were literally sustained attacks for months on Portland federal buildings. Individuals, right? Our elected, our elected representatives were afraid for their lives. The building was stormed. But we I'm not talking about that. But 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 you are when you're talking about the difference between the shaman the who was led in by police, I'm saying, pardon, who was escorted in by police. Well, so I'm comparing a specific instance where a guy is brought in by the police officers who give him a tour, open the door for him and show him where to go. He's, he's surrounded by cops. They give him a guided tour on video. It's this is all uh, you can watch it. My question is, in that particular instance, this one guy who's like notorious is he goes to prison or how about a better example? Owen Schroyer did not enter the building. Owen Schroyer was at a permitted rally on the Capitol grounds, and he went to prison and just got out last week. And what were the what 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 had he said? Had he exhorted people to enter the building? Had he exhorted people to violence? I think he said things like Democrats are communists and communists communists well, should die or something. That's not against the law.
Well, he went to prison for it. No, that's not against the law. That is free speech. But if we're talking about people who did tell people to go into the building and specifically to store in the building, then we're talking about Ray Epps. Well, we're not here to fight, man. We're here to... <laughs> we're here to storm the Capitol, hell yeah. Ray Epps is literally the only guy on video the day before and the day of telling people to enter and storm the Capitol. And yet he was treated as some sort of a victim or a conspiracy theory by both Democrats and the media. And only recently got a slap on the wrist misdemeanor charge, which makes no sense when we're talking about these people who were just on the Capitol grounds and did nothing else, yet got major sentences. Well, I, you know, once again, Tim, I'd have to read about that. I mean, I don't know, I don't know about that particular case. Ooh, how convenient. Held accountable, but should be held fairly accountable and that the legal system should be fair to everyone. Should That's be. what we can agree on. I suppose the issue for me is, and the reason why I say there will be a civil war is because when it comes to a general conversation with the public, they believe lies from the corporate press about what really happened that day and on other days. And it results in torture, solitary confinement, political persecutions. And <clears throat> this is all actively happening right now. You do think that some of the people who came into the building that day were acting violently. We see that as well. Yes. You, you do and believe they, that should, some people. I believe did. a lot of them. Okay. And I believe they should go to jail for for a good amount of time. Okay, 20, good. 20 years, however? Well, to, you know, once again, that's up to a jury and a judge. It's our legal system. So the problem then becomes, at a certain point, if Antifa, uh, the Summer of Love riots, uh, firebomb the White House, which they did, where's the where's the May 29th hearings? Why, why do we not have a May 29th commission on the firebombing of the White House in St. John's Church? Listen, I, I, once again, this is why, why Lady, Lady Liberty has a blindfold on. This is why prosecutors should try to be fair, obviously. Well, no, no, I, I get it. Fair. So what it comes down to, I believe, is that you don't know about it. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I mean, don't know about the about the which about these the, specific the, cases on January 6th. No, no, no. The firebombing of the White House on May 29th, 2020. May tw firebombing of the White House. No, I don't. Yes, exactly. Anybody who watches this channel knows that I talk about this over and over. Nobody knows about these things because the media purposely doesn't make a big issue of it. Yes, they may report on it as it's happening and maybe even a couple days after, but they'll put their own spin on it and it definitely won't be treated like they treat things like Charlottesville. That specific attack on the White House that day resulted in around 60 Secret Service agents being injured, a guard tower burned down, a church almost burned down, and Donald Trump rushed to a bunker because they were legitimately worried that people might actually get inside. The media at the time mocked the event and Donald Trump as bunker boy. And later, all charges dropped. This is a great example of what people like me and Robert Nawar constantly talk about when we're talking about this two-tier justice system. And it's not just the White House attack. There are so many other examples, like the attack on police defending a Christopher Columbus statue in Chicago. That was insanely coordinated and violent, and yet it's down the memory hole, never to be spoken of again. But there's no charges for any of those people, and that's okay because nobody even remembers it, and that's on purpose. When the media wants the American people to remember something, they make sure they do and when they don't they let it go down the memory hole firebombing of the white house on may 29 2020 so i assume that you're saying it's because the corporate media did not want me to know i mean no i honestly it was reported widely there were photos of smoke rising all over dc it was a mass riot they were making may fun of donald trump because he had donald, to go down to donald, the uh, yeah donald trump was forced into bunker. a bunker the police came out and started pushing people out, but there's been no hearings, there's been no commission. St. John's Church was set on fire. Yeah, and actually the media tried to make a big story about the National Guard having to use tear gas on the violent mob, trying to say that it was Donald Trump setting it all up for a photo op, which turned out to be a total lie. St. John's Church was set on fire. This is a historic American church where- I know that church, it's they set it on fire. where I live. Far left extremists firebombed the White House grounds. The reason you don't know uh, 70, about it. 70 plus firebombed. Throwing Molotov cocktails at the White House and torched a guard post. 70 plus police officers were injured. And so in what happened? Nothing. Nothing. The reason you don't know about it is because the media doesn't make a big deal about it. I disagree, it's I disagree. I think it's because I, with all with all due respect, I don't think you read the news the way Trump supporters and we do. Well, I'm not saying we as Trump too. supporters. I mean, there's, well, those two things are not mutually exclusive. I think that the average I mean, the liberal algorithms and so forth, because I do read the news and I do watch and I am think of myself as informed and I'm not. But I'll look. Trust me, I'll look.
I think what happens is the average liberal is getting their news and information from pundits, not from news sources. Right. And that's the issue here is because the biased media has turned into a biased justice system. And we're watching that play out right now. While the Democrats imprison their political opponents down to just regular people up to the 2024 presidential candidate as they accuse him of being an authoritarian threat. While they themselves are literally doing the things that the authoritarian threat does. I really don't see how these people see themselves as protectors of democracy as they cheer on the removal of the sitting president's main opponent in the next election from the ballot. They're literally trying to either imprison him or remove him from the ballot, yet see themselves as protectors of democracy. All right, folks, that's all I have for that, but I wanted to show you that interview because it sounded a lot like the stuff that we say here on this channel. Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you're still here, you might as well hit that like button, and I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. See you on the next one.